Hi guys, I wanted to show you how to get the most basic circuit working with the Arduino, measuring a voltage in the laboratory, and sending data to your computer. So I'm on Tinkercad, I'm over on the circuits area, and I'm going to say create a new circuit. It pulls up uh, a simple list of components, and it has most of the things I need to get started. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab an Arduino and place it in my workspace. I'll grab a breadboard, place that guy in my workspace. Then I need a resistor, which I can place on the breadboard. And I want to be careful so that, that one pin of the resistor is in one row of holes and the other pin is in a different row of holes. And the last thing I'm going to need is a capacitor. So I'm going to put that guy down here so he lives Let's see, actually, maybe I'll put them over here so you can see clearly what's going on there. I'll put them there. And, uh, okay, very good. Now, I want to wire this guy up so that I have the output of the PWM pin, one of these with the squiggle, the 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11 are all PWM pins. So I'm going to grab pin 3 and send that output over to the row so it's connected to this resistor. Then I'm going to connect the resistor to the capacitor. And finally, I'm going to connect the capacitor to the negative row on the breadboard. Of course, that doesn't go anywhere because nothing else is hooked up. So in order to get that guy to go to ground, I'm going to connect the ground pin from the Arduino to that row. So now this entire row is connected to ground. So what I'd like to do, uh, let's see, first of all, let's... Um, let's add some code. Now you get, when you start up the code editor for free, you get a blocks uh, code which sets the LED high, waits for a second, sets the LED low, and waits for a second. And then the corresponding C code is over here on the right. Um, we're going to be mostly working in C, so I'm going to dismiss with the block and we can just operate and see here. Um, if I run the code as it is right now, let's go ahead and look at our circuit. All it does is flash the LED. It goes high, it goes low, it goes high, it goes low. So that's good in the sense that it does something, but it's not that helpful in terms of solving our problem. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna fire up the serial port here with a serial begin. That sets up the serial port so I can send data back to the computer. And then just to test that concept, I'm going to add a line down here. Uh, let's say serial.print line OK. All right, so I'm a big fan of doing little things and then testing. So uh, if I run this, it'll make the LED flash, but also every time the LED uh, is prepared to go high, it's going to send a message to the computer. Okay, fantastic. So let's let's do that. It runs the thing. If I click the serial monitor, it's sending me an okay. And I get an okay, uh, you know, something like once a second. So beautiful. All right. Now, I want to actually collect some data. So what I want to do is take the analog zero line, that's analog pin zero, and let's connect that to the junction between the resistor and the capacitor. So it's going to measure the voltage drop, since it, it measures the voltage relative to ground. So it's going to measure the voltage on the capacitor. And uh, of course, to actually get the voltage in my program, I need to read it. So what I'm going to do here is simply say, um, actually, let's do this. We'll make a variable int value and we'll assign value to analog read and it's going to be pin 0. Actually, I think it's a lowercase a maybe. Is that right? Okay. Um, and then in the, instead of printing OK, I'm going to print value. Right? So let's let's look at that. Oop, it doesn't like this. What is the problem? Oh, I forgot my semicolon. Daggone it. All right, let's try this again. Boom. 
There we go. It's printing the value. And the value, of course, is zero because there's no charge on the capacitor, so there's no voltage on the capacitor. That's okay. The other thing I'd like to do is to um, get the time and print that. So let's do this. Let's say uh, int time. Actually, let's make it a long because time is can be a big number, and I think technically it returns a long. So we'll say, um, oopsie, I don't want to call it time though because that's the name of the function. So let's have it uh, uh, v time, which is the time at which the voltage was measured. So we'll say v time equals time. And I will print serial dot print v time and let's put a comma serial dot print comma okay let's try that okay the function name is millis let's uh, I just I use too many different programming languages that have different names for the same function so um, <clears throat> the thing is called millis let's try that and see how that works fantastic and there we go so it's, it's telling how many milliseconds it's been since the program started, and it's telling you the voltage. So you can use this if you, made, if you want to graph, for example, voltage versus time. You could use this to um, as your time column, and this could be your voltage column. Of course, if we wanted to measure time in seconds, we could divide the time by a 1,000, and then that would... Uh, give us the time in seconds. So there we have it. Now the time is being reported in seconds. Fantastic. Also, the voltage, um, we might want to report that in volts. It turns out that the value you get here is a number between 0 and 1023. 1023 corresponds to 5 volts. 0 corresponds to 0 volts. So we could also multiply here by 5 and divide by 1023, and that would effectively compute the uh, value in volts. So there we go. Now it's reporting in volts. Let's, uh, let's actually set the voltage on the capacitor to something. So I'm going to say digital, oh no, analog write, pin 3, and let's set it to 2.5 volts. Um, that would be 127, half of 255 roughly. Um, Remember, this is a PWM output so that it's only high half of the time. So let's go ahead and run that guy. And you can see, uh, there we go. It's, it's charging up the capacitor, but it's taking some time. Oh, I see the trouble. Ah, I should have thought of this. Let's it's not working. Look, it's jumping all over the place, so something's goofy. But wait a minute. Let's see if we can diagnose what's going on. I'm going to come down here and grab an oscilloscope. I can find one. There we go, an oscilloscope. Let's use this to actually measure what the voltage looks like as a function of time and see if we can figure out what the trouble is. So I'm going to send this guy down to ground. The oscilloscope measures the voltage difference between these two pins. So I'm going to move this one over here. It'll look at the same pin that the Arduino is looking at. And let's run the simulation now and look at what that looks like. Oh my goodness. Okay, so that's... Uh, it's going up and down like crazy. Let's look at microseconds here. How about a thousand microseconds? There we go. So the problem is this this uh, RC time constant for the RC circuit here is much too short. The PWM output is flopping up and down, and the the thing's not actually uh, filtering out the PWM. So what I need to do is go in here and adjust the resistance. Let's make that 100k. Oh, look at that. That's much better. Maybe we could bump up this capacitance a little bit. 
So what I've just discovered is that uh, when you change the capacitance, it, it doesn't update the display on the on the uh, oscilloscope. But you, but if you change the time scale, then suddenly it, it does change the display. So anyway, we get a nice flat line if we make the RC time constant much larger than the um, time for the PWM signal to go. So if I pull up the code editor again, pull up the serial monitor, you can see now it's got a nice steady voltage. So anyway, that's uh, an easy way. You can see that you can set up a circuit, uh, collect the data in the Arduino using uh, analog read, use millis to get the time, and send the data back to the computer using print and print line. Notice print doesn't put a new line, but print line starts a new line. So that, that way you can turn this into a comma-separated value file that you can easily put into Excel or Python or whatever your, your desire is. So that's the way it works.